AP Biology, Chapter 39, Plant Response. You may have noticed things like the plants moving toward the light, and uh, you might wonder why they can do that. And today you're going to learn about some of the, the ways that plants respond to their environment using things like hormones. Plant reactions. Stimuli in a stationary life. Plants, uh, of course, don't move around in any uh, large amounts. However, they can move a little bit. Animals respond to stimuli by changing their behavior. They can move away uh, from negative stimuli, like a fire, or move toward positive stimuli, like a fly going toward a uh, piece of food. Plants respond to stimuli by adjusting growth and development. They can't just walk away from uh, an area or move toward an area that they want to. Pause for a second, think about it. Now, if it's directed movement, that would be taxis. Remember, random movement is kinesis. All right, so here we have a potato grown in the dark, and it gets really thick uh, as far as the stem's coming out. But after exposure to light, then there's green. How does that happen? This is called the signal transduction pathway basically what happens here. And this is just uh, background information. Uh, we might go over this a little bit more in detail before the test. Hormones or environmental stimuli, uh, these are sometimes proteins. They could be other molecules, but many times they're proteins. These proteins will bind to a protein in a uh, cell membrane of the plant and uh, cause a chemical reaction that will result in a bunch of relay molecules that will transduct or carry the signal to um, the nucleus where transcription and translation will occur and uh, proteins will be made, and then there'll be some kind of response, whether that's greening or growing uh, one side of the cell longer than the other cell. All these kind of things um, take place using a signal transduction pathway. Let's go ahead and write down just the first part here. Signal transduction pathway model. A signal triggers a receptor, and then we have a uh, internal cellular messenger that causes a response. All right, here's a good uh, example of a single transduction pathway. Here we have the light, uh, instead of a hormone, light hitting a protein called the cytochrome. This cytochrome will uh, allow other messengers to be released, which will activate kinases. You don't have to know that specifically. You should know that transcription factors bind upstream of the promoter region on a gene, and that will allow the um, RNA polymerase to bind to the promoter. Once the RNA, uh, binds, RNA polymerase binds to the promoter, we're going to have transcription of that gene which will make messenger RNA, which will be um, splicing out those introns, putting the five prime cap and poly a tail on. Then the messenger RNA leaves the nucleus and translation occurs to make the protein. And then the proteins are typically enzymes and other um, molecules or will make other molecules. And um, then you have greening or deadulation. So this is one way plants will get green. Here we have uh, calcium being taken up by a, a transport pro protein. And then that's going to be activating other kinases, other proteins, other messengers that in turn activate transcription factors that bind upstream of the promoter, allow RNA polymerase to bind, transcription, translation, and other proteins involved with green. So this is basically how it works. And this is kind of similar how it works in us too, except we don't respond quite the same way to light and uh, calcium. But uh, it's a response. Something happens in the nucleus to make some uh, messenger RNA. And then we make proteins that just that does something. You should remember that if it's a protein that's going to be leaving the cell, that used by the cell, it's made by the rough ER. Remember the endomembrane system, connecting that to chapter uh, second quarter. All right, plant hormones. Let's go ahead and write this down. Chemical signals that coordinate different parts of an organism. Only small, minute amounts are required, produced by one part of the body, transported to another part, binds to a specific, you should underline that, they're very specific, and triggers response in the target cells and tissues using that signal transduction pathway. Here are the uh, six plant hormones. What I would do is make a table out of this, big, uh, big old square, and then next to it just write down things like function and um, other notes. Thyroxin is a human hormone, not a plant hormone. Phototropism. Photo means light, tropism means movement. So phototropism literally means movement toward the light. There were some experiments trying to figure out why plants and how plants move to the light. So let's take a look at these. Um, some thought it might have been something on the tip. 
So when you remove the tip, the plant doesn't move to the light. So that kind of gives you a clue as to maybe something in the tip is making the plant move. When the tip is covered by something that's not clear, that's uh, opaque, then it still doesn't move to the light. So it's like, what's going on with that? Uh, so if the light doesn't hit the tip, then the plant doesn't bend to the light. If the tip is covered by a clear cap, then it still does move to the light. So it does kind of let you know that it's not something in the air, it's the light itself that's triggering something in the tip that causes it to uh, turn. When the base is covered by a, uh, a shield that light cannot penetrate, that's opaque, it still moves to the, the light. So, you know, you can try to see, you'll see we're doing like an independent dependent control variable type thing here. We're trying different things to try to figure out what part of the plant is responsible for triggering the movement toward the light. And it turns out that it's the tip. So the question is, well how, what, what's going on in the tip? Why is it doing that? Well, if we separate the tip by a gelatin block where chemicals can diffuse through the gelatin, then it still moves through. So something in the tip is being sent down in order to bend it. And the way we can test for that is if we uh, separate the tip by mica where the chemicals can't go through, then there is no movement toward the light, even though both the top and the bottom are exposed to the light. So something in the tip is being sent down to bend the plant. And then we have even uh, more experiments here. We have another one where we have uh, an enclosed tip placed on an agar block. And then we put growth promoting chemicals diffusing into the agar block. So there's just diffusion going on. So now the agar block is full of these growth promoting chemicals that, uh, again, hadn't been discovered in details in 1926. Control group does nothing. Another control, the agar block lacking chemical has no effect, no surprise. If you have the chemicals on both sides, then uh, the plant doesn't turn. So that's kind of interesting. You know, it's, if you have chemicals everywhere, nothing really happens as far as turning to the light. But take a look here. If you put the chemicals, growth chemicals on one side, the plant bends in the opposite direction. And if you put those growth chemicals on the other side, the plant bends in the other direction. So something about those chemicals is causing the plant to bend in the opposite direction. And that was discovered to be auxin. Let's go ahead and write this down. Auxin, also called indole acetic acid, acid AIAA, stimulates cell elongation near the apical meristems, near the tips. It enhances apical dominance, meaning that the plant is going to do more primary growth than secondary growth if the tips are present, if the apical areas are present. If you cut off the tips, then you'll have uh, no more apical dominance and you'll have lots of growth sideways. The classical uh, explanation of phototropism is that we have one side getting longer than the other side when exposed to light. So let's take a look here, and you're going to need to write this down. Light hits one side of the plant. Chemicals at the tip, called auxin, it's a plant hormone, are sent to the opposite side. Take a look, the opposite side. And on the opposite side, the auxin, through the single transduction pathway, causes that opposite side to grow longer. So this side is growing longer, the side that's being uh, exposed to auxin, even though that's opposite of the light. And as the side that's opposite of light grows longer, it bends the plant toward the light. And that's how plants do phototropism. Let's go and write that down. This will end part one of your notes on chapter 39, Plant Hormones.